Hmm, what to review? Maybe I should look at that Japanese homebrew version of Simon that features Dory and Terry Funk. Hmm, nah. You know, I never did end up reviewing Muscle. If you follow this show from the start, in the first dozen or so episodes, we covered a lot of the old Nintendo Entertainment System wrestling games, and so those were really the starting point for the genre to a lot of players. But there's one fairly well-known game we never covered, and that would be Muscle. I rented Muscle when I was a kid because, hey, it's a wrestling game, of course it's worth it. I took it home, popped it into my NES, played for about a minute, and realized there was some poor decision making at work. And that's why I haven't touched on the game yet. Everyone knows Muscle's bad, its badness is legendary and already well documented on the internet. Even the GameFAQs walkthrough seems apologetic about its existence. But I haven't played the game in roughly three decades and really don't remember it. Does it deserve another assessment? And look, I'm as tired of the, hey, you know that thing that's widely accepted as bad? Well, you're wrong. It's actually really great. Hot take is you, but, well, we're nothing if not fair. Let's back up a little bit. Muscle is an acronym for millions of unusual small creatures lurking everywhere, which actually spells Moosel, but I won't die on that hill. It was based on a Mattel toy line that was itself based on a toy line from Japan called Kinkeshi that depicted a long-running manga and anime called Kinikuman about mm, super-powered wrestling to be quite reductive. There was a sequel called Ultimate Muscle that aired on Fox 15 or so years ago, if you're old enough to remember that. The toys we saw in the U.S. were these little eraser-looking all pink figures of bizarre wrestlers, and you can get a bunch of them fairly cheaply, including briefly in cans of Nestle Quick, which is kind of weird and gross. I believe I had a set of them, and they were okay. There wasn't a ton you could do with them. Their biggest plus was the fact they were fairly cheap, and I guess they're making a comeback of sorts with a set of Lucha figures coming out in 2018. The anime never aired in the U.S., so we had a toy line without an animated series, which was kind of odd for the 80s. I guess the figures were popular because Bandai released a game based on it in 1986, a year after it came out in Japan. Bandai is still around and is involved with a bunch of different licensed toy and card games, but back in the day, if you saw the Bandai logo on an NES game, it wasn't a good sign. Not as bad a rep as LJN, but you were definitely taking your chances. The game is based around tag team wrestling, so you start the game and pick two different wrestlers out of a roster of eight. That's pretty cool and adds to the replay value. You get to choose from names like Muscle Man, Robin Mask, and Larman Man, who was called Ramen Man in the Japanese version, which was my nickname in college, oddly enough. <laughs> Apparently there was a guy called Brocken Jr. in the Japanese version who was a Nazi, and was thankfully replaced in the U.S. version by someone named uh, Geronimo with his uh, tomahawk technique. The gameplay is where things completely collapse. You can press A to punch, or B and then A to do a jump kick. You can try and bounce off the ropes, suplex your opponent from behind, or kind of shove them into the ropes. Honestly, you'll just be hopping around the ring hoping to hit your opponent, while your opponent just wails on you. You have an energy bar of these balls at the top of the screen, and they deplete as you take damage. According to the instructions, when you're down to two balls, your movement slows down, and when you're down to one, you can't jump anymore. So the worse you do, the harder it is to win, which I guess is realistic, but not that much fun in practice. Every now and then, this guy on the outside, who I guess is called Meat, will toss a ball in the ring. Whoever gets it starts glowing and can pull off their super move. And yes, everyone has an individual super move, which is great, but good luck pulling one off. You come across three different rings. The normal ring, one with electric ropes where the lights flicker endlessly, and you can compete against your friends in a seizure match. And there's an ice ring where you slip and slide around. Now why can't they put something like that in the next WWE 2K game? I mean, yeah, it's goofy, but it would be different, and God help us, a bit of fun. This game is ugly, no denying that. It basically looks like an old Atari game that aids Wheaties for breakfast. Although, to be fair, this came out in 1985 in Japan, so it's still pretty early in the NES's lifespan. As far as presenting wrestling, it does an okay job. The ring's a decent size, the perspective looks okay, you get a crowd, the ring lights for some reason. The wrestlers themselves are presented in a really cartoonish style with minimal details. Although, to be fair, they are colorful and easy to distinguish from each other. The sounds come straight from the Atari, no joke. And there's no in-game music, so if nothing's happening, the game gives you the silent treatment. One of the complaints I've seen is that the game bears a little resemblance to the characters' events in the manga and anime, which is fair but didn't register with me since I'm not a huge fan of those. I suppose if in the next WWE game John Cena had a chef gimmick it would annoy me, but not someone who wasn't familiar with him. Well, I think we can safely classify Muscle as still bad, although there are some interesting ideas at play. But once again, gameplay trumps all. And if your game isn't fun to play, no innovations will save it. Well, that's all until next time, when we hopefully play something a little bit better. 
But until then, thanks for watching, and remember, the winner is you. Go! Go!